Hi everyone, Shane Armin Rowe here, and let's go ahead and get started in gaming mode. We need to go and figure out what your IP addresses are. You may need them, probably not, but we're going to have this information on hand before we get over onto the Windows side. Now I have two, one is my wireless address and one is my wired address because I'm in a dock right now. Make note of both of them and which one is which, because you'll you may need them later, but probably not. The other thing we want to find out is what your host name is. Now, it's probably Steam Deck, but if it's not, if you decided to rename it or something like that, like I did here, I decided to name this Steam Deck LCD as my host name. So make note of that. If it's Steam Deck, you'll be fine. Otherwise, write it down in case you changed it. Okay. So now we are done in gaming mode. It's time to head over to desktop mode. And we've got plenty to do here. So let's go ahead and launch the console. Okay. The first thing we're gonna do is type, who am I? That's gonna give you your username. It's probably deck, unless you changed it. Next up, we're gonna check your pseudo password. So type in password, set your password if you don't have one, or just make sure that you do have one because we will need pseudo next. There's some interesting stuff for you to read on the screen. So go ahead and consume that as well. Okay. Next up, we are going to go ahead and use sudo systemctl enable sshd. This essentially enables the ssh service. You're going to be asked for your password. It will not echo when you type. So when you type, it won't show it. Next up, we're going to do the same thing. You can press up on the keyboard and do start sshd. That's going to start it. You've enabled it, but not started it. Start will now start it. And now we'll double check it with status. Now these are all these commands are gonna be down in the description below, so you won't have a problem. All right, let's go ahead and knock ourselves on over to Windows 11. And you're gonna type in CMD, find the command prompt, right click and run as administrator. I would rather you have too much permissions than not enough permissions. Okay, so from the command line, we're gonna go ahead and update winget. So do winget upgrade winget. I didn't have any updates. And now I would recommend you cut and paste the next commands from the description. We're gonna win get install win FSP. This is a precursor to SSHFS. And then we're going to use win get to install the actual SSHFS service. There we go. And it downloads and installs. Okay, believe it or not, that's, that's kind of it. Those are the, that's the plumbing that you need. Now it's time to put the face on this thing. So go ahead, use the link in the description below. This is a template t batch file. So go ahead and download that. It's very small, it's a zip file. And then go ahead and drag it to your desktop. Now I'm using directory opus here, but whatever you need to do, drop it onto your desktop. And we can go ahead and close the browser. We don't need that anymore. Right click it and hit extract all. Okay, and then there's a batch file inside of that extracted folder. We'll go ahead here and drag it as well to your desktop. Great. And we'll clean up after ourselves. We don't need the folder or the zip anymore. Let's go ahead and delete those. Okay, now we're left with a batch file. Never ever run a batch file until you open it and look at it and or have somebody explain to you what's in it like we're gonna do here. Batch files are inherently dangerous. All right, so what we've done here is uh, we've got a basic script for mounting three different mount points. You're gonna need your SDs your S, you're gonna need your micro SD drives unique GUID here. We're gonna find that in just a minute. Go ahead and type in your password here. And uh, we'll go, we're gonna go ahead and say we're gonna mount three points, X, Y, and Z. So we're gonna mount three drives. These commands just delete them if they exist. These next ones actually set them as X, Y, and Z. The home directory, SD card, and root. Okay. Let's go ahead and just select the drive as block because we don't know what it is yet. We need to go find it, but we need our first connection to the Steam Deck to get it. So I'm just gonna set it as blah. Okay, that should about do it. Now, if you renamed it and your machine is not named Steam Deck anymore, right? You're gonna have to go in and change the word Steam Deck here. So we're gonna go in and we're going to rename everything that says Steam Deck, mine Steam Deck, LCD. So I'm going to change it to Steam Deck LCD. LCD. And then I'm going to copy it to the other two 
or type it in whatever you want and make sure that they all match. So this is three commands to mount three drives to three different locations. The username is deck. If yours is not deck, you need to change it. And of course, you'll need to put in your real password. Okay, we're ready to run it for the first time. We're gonna double click it. You may get a pop-up warning. Go ahead and accept that. Okay, so we see that everything seemed to work except for this SD card thing, and we expected it not to work because we don't have the proper name of the SD card. But the other two points did mount. Let's go ahead and go into the regular file explorer since you guys don't like it when I use directory opus. And you can see right here, I have two drives, X and Z. X is my home directory, Z is the root, but I don't have my SD card. Now you think you're clever and you can go to uh, uh, run media and get to your SD card this way and you can, but you can't do anything to it with this mount point. So don't try to be clever, just keep following the video. All right, so grab the folder name here it looks like a folder, right? So grab this whole thing. This is a GUID specific to your micro SD card. You gotta have this. You can't mount the fake mount point. So you have to have it. So let's go ahead and edit this guy again. This time we're gonna paste that into the drive line. See how that is? No quotes, none of that, no spaces. Great, and of course, we'll have to put our password in here. Let's do it. Now this time it'll dump all three drives. Well, there was only two connected, right? And it's gonna connect one, two, and three. Boom, including the SD card, everything successful. Woohoo! nice job, you've made it this far. All right, so let's go back to File Explorer and you will see all three locations have been mounted. Drive X, Y, and Z for home, micro SD card, and for root. You probably won't need root. I put it on here only so that we can go in and get that drive name and I'll show you why. Hit properties of that. It says there's only five gigabytes of space there. Now you know that your SSD has a lot more than that, but that particular root mount point only uh, operates in a five gigabyte window. So you never wanna use that to try to write anything. Instead of trying to go to run media, whatever, just mount something straight to your SD card. <clears throat> All right, we're in good shape. Just for fun, let's go ahead and do a couple of bonus things. Let's go ahead and rename this to Mount Deck, and we will copy and paste a copy, and we're gonna make another one called Unmount Deck, because sometimes you might wanna unmount it. So we'll go ahead and um, we'll edit this, and we're gonna just delete everything except for those net use deletes. That should make sense, right? So now when you run that, it'll just delete those three drives and you're back to normal. Hey, look, no more drives. Pretty easy, and then when you're ready to put them back, now you could, if, if you really wanted to, right, you could even take out all the deletes from this batch file and just leave the mounts into that batch file and just have two batch files to control it. It's really up to you. Now, if you have any problems, if you see access denied, the first thing you should do is add ipconfig space slash flush DNS at the top of your mount script. What this will do is, is it'll release uh, the DNS, any of the DNS that's pointed to Steam Deck, right? So essentially, if your Steam Deck changed IP addresses or something like that, Flush DNS here should go ahead and allow your system to reacquire the IP address that's related to your host name. The other thing you may have to do, hopefully not, create another parameter here called IP equals and set the IP address of your Steam Deck here. Then instead of actually calling it Steam Deck LCD, we're gonna call it percent IP percent, and we're gonna change it across the board. Essentially, this is a variable, right? So now, instead of trying to mount using uh, the host name of Steam Deck LCD, it'll do it right to the IP address. This is a Hail Mary pass. Hopefully you'll never have to do it, but it's better to have it now than if you don't need it. Listen, we've gone a long way. We've done a lot of stuff. You guys have been the best. I hope this really helps you out. Uh, and please, if you have any questions, drop by our Discord. I'm Shane R. Monroe. If you like what you saw, like, subscribe, hit the bell. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching and take care.